Um, so we at AWA have kind of, we've operationalized our language. This way we can have um, an internal conversation. You guys are expected to be aware of it, but not necessarily have memorized it. Um, I'm just going to refer to certain body language uh, terms with this operationalized language because um, it is just how we at AWA collectively um, speak about body language. So in our operationalized language, we have friendly, fearful, displacement, appeasement, stress, reactive, aggressive, aroused, under-socialized, selective, and anxiety. These are all terms we regularly use. Um, each term corresponds with observable body language. So, a friendly dog has a loose body, long lip, loose open mouth pant, ears neutral, sweeping tail wag, um, squinty eyes, and will readily approach. A fearful dog has round eyes, dilated pupils, ears are back, closed mouth, low or tucked tail, may be trembling, have a stiff body, he'll be low and, ar and have an arched back, um, and may be pilo erect. So pilo erect is a fancy word for um, hackles standing up on the back. Um, it, pilo erect is a physiological response to something. So it could be fear, it could be excitement, it could be startle, but it's a response. So displacement and appeasement behaviors, um, they are termed as calming signals. So displacement behaviors are a sign of frustration or lack of choices or, you know, the dog is uncomfortable. Um, they're coping mechanisms. So it's kind of like twirling your hair or biting your fingernails. Um, sniffing the ground, yawning, scratching, urogenital checkout, shaking, shaking off, panting, turning away, and lip licking. These are all things, if you see kind of out of context, you should be like, oh, this dog is displaying uh, displacement behaviors. You know, something might be making him uncomfortable. So for example, if a big tall man in uniform walks into your office and you have your dog sitting at your feet and all of a sudden you know your dog goes oh my god what's that turns away and starts scratching himself out of nowhere you know he's saying hey this is kind of weird i'm kind of uncomfortable i don't know what to do but i need to make myself feel better about it um in appeasement gestures or behaviors are um, something dogs do to communicate directly with another animal. So it is a way for them to turn off perceived aggression or it is a greeting ritual. Um, so if you see two dogs approaching one another and one dog suddenly turns away um, or lifts their paw, they're saying, hey, you know, I mean no harm, we're cool. Um, so examples of dis, uh, appeasement gestures are the submissive grin, airplane ears, rolling on their back, which is what we call a tap out. Um, it, it's the ultimate way of them saying, hey, I mean no harm, I'm exposing all my vulnerable parts, so, you know, please, please don't hurt me. A paw lift, ears. I said ears to the side, um, a low fast tail wag and averted gaze. Um, stress related behaviors. So we deal with a lot of stress related behaviors in the shelter because it's a really unnatural environment. The animals are under a great deal of stress. Um, so they will often display these behaviors. So lip licking, yawning, excessive panting, trembling, hypersalivation, not eating, excessive grooming or excessive shedding, excessive barking, whining, pacing, spinning, licking the walls, stiff body. Um, reactive. So reactive is a term we use to describe a type of frustration. 
Um, it could either be behind a kennel door or in a crate or on a leash. So it's barking, lunging, pulling excessively, tense body, ears forward, um, tail straight out and eyes fixed. I mean, they're really saying, oh my God, I can't get to this thing. I'm gonna, you know, kind of act out. Um, aggressive. So aggressive is a term we have to have in there because a aggression is a social behavior. It is a form of communication. We don't want it to get to that point. We want it to have listened to all the other things dogs try and tell us with their body language before we get to aggression. So aggression is intent to do harm. Um, their weight is forward, ears are forward, eyes are hard and fixed. Their body is very stiff, they may freeze, um, tail up, uh, biting, growling, showing teeth, very tense mouth. Aroused. Aroused is another form of frustration. Um, it's very common in younger adolescent dogs. Um, it can cause problems. Um, it's, they're very jumpy, mouthy, lots of fluid wasted movement. Um, they may hump, lots of excited barking and vocalization, just a lot of kind of wasted energy. Um, under socialized, under socialized is a term we use when we know something about the dog. Um, most dogs are under socialized um, and we know nothing about their past. But say we got dogs from like the Shemong hoarding case, we knew those dogs were under socialized. Um, so they didn't have enough early socialization between eight and 14 weeks of age. Um, so the way we characterize under socialized is stiff body, avoidant of human touch and interaction, always turning away, they're very hard to coax. Um, they startle easily, they have very wide eyes and never want to make eye contact. Selective. Selective is a term we use to describe exactly that. So a, a dog can be selective of something. You know, they're picky. They may not like every dog. They may not like, um, they may not like every person. So we would use the term selective to describe that. Anxiety. Anxiety is a general term used to describe several disorders. And yes, dogs do suffer, suffer from different types of anxiety. Um, these disorders cause fear, nervousness, and apprehension. Um, they, symptoms of anxiety can be mild or they can be severe. Um, it is the anticipation of fear. Um, so for dogs, it includes generalized anxiety disorder, um, OCD, PTSD, and separation anxiety most commonly. Um, and they are all, they would all need medical intervention. So that being said, now that we've explained some of the body language characteristics, we're gonna to go to the slides and you guys can kind of tell me what you see. Um, so we're gonna start with this first slide. You guys can all see it? Yeah. Okay. So what do you see? Way well, line. Yep. Mouth is closed, tense, ears are back. Right. Ears are back. Exactly. So this dog has probably has some type of apprehension to something. Um, he may be a bit fearful. Okay. This picture is a little hard to, to see. It's a little fuzzy. It didn't enlarge well. However, <laughs> is this dog safe to handle? Nope. <laughs> right. Why? What, what are you seeing? Now. Yeah. The teeth are bearing back on my knee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ears are back. Ears are back. He's got a very stiff body and he is pylo erect. Hard. It's hard to see. 
Um, so his hackles are standing up on his back. He also has really big round eyes. So no, I wouldn't advise handling this dog. I would try and make a friend first. Okay. <laughs> I love this dog. This dog is great. So what do we see? Last. Yes. I mean, I, I would hope you would all figure this one out. This dog is extremely friendly or happy. Um, Looks happy to me. Yeah, relaxed. <laughs> Everything about this dog is relaxed. His mouth is wide open. His tongue's even hanging out. So. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> um, He's a nice dog. <laughs> okay. So. The first picture on your left is probably pretty clear, but you should observe some things. So not only are his teeth exposed, his muzzle is wrinkled. Um, it's, it, it's hard to s What's going on? <laughs> it, it's hard to, to see, but his ears are forward. And his eyes. His eyes are extremely hard. Um, I'm sure if that dog was staring at you, it would give you the willies. Um, so the dog on your right, what do we see? This one's a little bit more challenging because we don't really know what he's looking at. We don't really know what's going on. Leah, what do you see? His ears are up, his eyes are making contact with something, his paw is lifted either as a don't hurt me or I'm going to come, but his body language is in one position, it's not forward or back, it's kind of just standing straight, Right. but his head is looking at whatever the object is. Right. He's, he's alert, he's focused on something. Um, it's hard to tell whether he is pointing. I mean, maybe he's doing that. Uh, as I said, it's hard to tell, um, but it is a good example of body language. You know, he's clearly focused on something. What his exact feelings about it are, are, are yet, you know, yet to be seen. Okay. We're going to So. The dog on your left, what do you see? So this dog is yawning. Yawning is a displacement behavior or it can be a sign of stress. It's probably both in this situation. I mean, we don't really know what's going on in the environment. We do know that this dog was just picked up um, and he is showing some form of stress related to that. Um, his body isn't loose um, and his ears would probably be forward. Um, and we'll move on to the dog on the right. The dog on the right is doing something very interesting. So he's pro he, he, you know, he is licking the wall or he's trying to peel the paint off the wall. Um, his body is very stiff, his weight's forward, um, and his tail is up. Um, this is a pretty clear sign of stress in a shelter environment. That would be a dog we'd love to send out to foster. Okay, so these two are also a little tricky. Um, what do you see with the dog on the left? I mean, he's stretching, but why is he stretching? He is doesn't seem all that relaxed. His eyes are round. His ears are back. I mean, you don't, you know, it, it's hard to tell out of context, but, you know, stretching can also be a displacement behavior that is alleviating some type of internal conflict. Um, so he's trying to loosen himself up there. The dog on the right is obviously, um, 
displaying on an appeasement gesture, but why? I mean, his paw is lifted, his head is kind of down, his eyes are averted, his mouth is closed, and his body isn't exactly loose. So um, he might be saying to somebody, you know, hey, don't, don't hurt me. Okay. So the one on the left is a picture, but it kind of clearly gets um, the point across. So Leah, what do you think this dog is doing or reacting to? What? What? I lost her? Sorry, I was, there's chats. I'm, I'm answering your chat questions for you. Okay, I can't even see the chat questions. <laughs> see, I got you. Okay. Teamwork. Fine. So the dog on the left is reacting to the people, the skateboard, the bicycle. He's saying, hey, I'm uncomfortable. I'm going to do something to calm myself down. So I'm going to say, oh my God, what are all these things and sniff the ground. It's an appropriate behavior. Um, I would pay my dog for doing that. I'd say, oh, good job. You, you went and you sniffed the ground. You didn't um, uh, choose to bark, lunge, or bite. You know, yeah. I, Displacement behaviors are an appropriate form of dealing with um, stress, anxiety, fear, any apprehension the dog might have. The dog on the right, this again is a kind of classic uh, shelter dog behavior. So jumping, he's probably barking, stiff body, um, he is not a happy dog. It's probably not I'm happy to see you. It's like, hey, I'm totally frustrated about being in this space. I have no choices. Um, I, I don't get to choose when I go out, what I eat, when I eat. You know, I've got no toys. I'm just locked in this box. And that's a way of him uh, displaying this stress. It's something we should react to and try and make his life better. This guy, this is a common uh, shelter dog behavior and young adolescent dogs as well. So he's jumping, he's mouthing, he's biting the leash. Um, he's just moving around a whole lot. Um, this is what we would describe as an arousal behavior. Um, it, he's not trying to be aggressive. He's trying to get out all this energy. You know, he doesn't know what to do with himself. He's a little frustrated. Um, but that's not to say this type of behavior can't be concerning. It can be absolutely scary for many people because the dog, do, you know, will often, you know, jump up and mouth your hand. And, you know, when they mouth your hand, even though they're not attempting to bite, their teeth are still on your skin. Um, so this is another very common, uh, behavior concern. So I would hope you would know what these two are. <laughs> uh, they are a little scary. They're saying, Hey, go away. This is your last chance before I bite you. Um, and you should listen to that barking, growling, showing teeth hard stares, ears forward, you know, they're telling you, uh, I'm uncomfortable, please stop, you know, because they're going to, you know, if you don't listen, you can get injured. Uh, I don't recommend getting bitten by a dog. It's not fun. Um, it's very painful. So, you know, your best defense against anything bad ever happening is listening to this and saying, okay, you're angry, you're, you're upset, you're afraid, I am gonna go the other way, let's regroup and try again with something else. So, these two are displaying behaviors of possibly fear, um, alertness, it could be a predecessor to aggression because look where their weight is look at their tail carriage look at their eyes they're definitely focused on something 
We don't know what. Um, their ears are forward. I mean, this guy on the left is totally, you know, has his hackles up, so he's pilo erect. You know, uh, pay attention. You know, this isn't a happy dog. This dog is saying uh, something is bothering me. So these guys are doing what we call whale eye. Whale eye is having big round eyes and pupils and they're not making direct eye contact. They are showing you uh, the whites of their eyes. Dogs don't have a lot of whites in their eyes so when you see them, pay attention. You know, they're, they're trying to avert their gaze to not be a threat but a lot of times people don't see it. Um, both dogs have their ears back and mouths are very tense. These are all behaviors to pay attention to. This guy is displaying fearful behavior. He's lip licking, he's got this classic low arched body, his ears are back, his eyes are round, his mouth is closed, um, and his tail is tucked. So he is afraid of what is going on with this guy. I mean, he's probably trying to get him on this scale, but this is really affecting this dog. Um, another thing we see is dogs trying to become one with the wall and blend in with the environment. Um, they are saying, hey, I'm not here. Please don't bother me. Please don't hurt me. I am, I am just one with the wall. I, I, you know, I'm going to be as small as possible. Um, the dog on the right is doing what we call a tap out. So it's not to be confused with asking for a belly rope. Um, he is kind of closed in. Dogs, you're going to see dogs ask for a belly rub if you're familiar with them. Um, shelter dogs, not so much. Um, and you'll know the difference because usually when a dog is tapping out, they're really closed in. Their tail may be tucked, you know, their eyes are averted. They're not, and their body's kind of stiff. It's not like they're sprawled out asking at your feet asking for a belly rub. If you see this, this is the ultimate, uh, you know, dog saying, hey, I give up. I mean no harm. Please don't hurt me. Um, you should try and change how they're feeling about this. So, um, Bring in some treats, ask for a sit. Um, bring in a toy, ask him to play. I mean, whatever you were doing was bothering them. Hey Liz. Yeah. I have a question on that slide. So should you pet a dog that is showing those signs? So you shouldn't, most people do. So, in the video I was going to show, um, there is a dog tapping out and the guy is trying to pet him and get the dog to move and the dog snaps at him multiple times. Um, so unfortunately, you know, technology and me don't get along. Uh, <laughs> it's always the case. <laughs> I need somebody a little more tech savvy than me. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, <laughs> It, dogs are very tolerant of what we do as people. Um, they are our oldest domesticated species, and we've kind of conditioned them to be used to our, our insanity where we are, you know... That's, that's Talia. Not <laughs> acting. Um, <laughs> the way they want us to. So 
So, Liz, there's a question I have uh, that was just sent, and it says, what about the puppy that is trying to be one with the wall? Should we pet it, pick it up? What if they are like that for days? So, this is a dog I would recommend hand... So, you would hand feed this dog everything. I would, you know, make his meals like wet food or cooked chicken. I would try and really build a relationship with this dog. Um, I, I would sit there and I would talk to him. I wouldn't force him to move. Um, if he's comfortable there, you know, maybe set up his crate there um, and then just start spending time with him. Um, you're, <laughs> with fearful dogs and dogs who, you know, are really trying to become one with the wall and, you know, avoidant, you, you really need to focus on that relationship building. And the, most of the time, the way to do that is through high value food. Um, and it needs to become a central part of that dog's life. Uh, play is also really great, but um, that doesn't come in until later usually. Um, you can also use products like Adaptil and Rescue Remedy to try and help that dog relax a little bit. Um, you should also have a routine. Um, dogs, actually any animal, us included, like to know, uh, you know, what is predictable. We like to know what's coming next. We like to be able to plan. We like to be able to, you know, know it's going to rain tomorrow. We like to be able to know, you know, everything's going to be okay. So schedules and routine are also incredibly important for dogs like this. It's a brief, in a nutshell, what to do with that dog. Any more questions on these slides? Good. Okay. Next. So, this dog is displaying appeasement behavior. So, whatever he's approaching, he's kind of turning away. He's not approaching head on. Um, he's not making direct eye contact. Um, his ears are kind of out to the side and his paw is lifted. He's kind of saying like, eh, you know, like, don't, don't hurt me. We're, we're going to be okay. You know, it's a kind of a cautious approach. He's really not quite sure how he's feeling about whatever it is he's coming up on. I also hope you know what these two are. Um, I love the happy dogs. I really do. They make, they make the world go around. <laughs> um, so they are very happy, very loose, open mouths, um, soft eyes. You know, this tail carriage, you know, this golden probably has this really broad sweeping tail wag. Neutral weight distribution. I also love this. Play this is a play bow. Dogs do this when they want to play. It can also be um, part of an appeasement gesture. Um, so when dogs do that, they're saying, hey, let's play. I, I'm not gonna hurt you. We're, we're gonna be best friends, you know? Um, they can, dogs who will play bow with other dogs can, can kind of turn what is a tense situation into, you know, a really fun game you know your dog who approaches another dog who might be like hey why why are you why are you coming up to me and then they're like oh well I just wanted to play so I'm just gonna play bow a bunch of times and have this loose goofy wag and loose body and soft eyes and you know we're, we're just gonna have a good time so this is also important to know And that is the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? I am going to um, post those links or I'm going to send them to Leah and she can post them because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good with technology. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying that because I, I got nothing. <laughs> um, Leah, you can post them under the video. The links. So it is, no questions? Did I answer everybody's questions? If you think of anything, uh, feel free to email me. 
Hey Liz, I have a question. Yeah. Has anything happened in the shelter that might have been an incident with the dog that has displayed body language that was kind of sudden and unpredictable <laughs> and there's something we should watch out for? Uh, oh, yes. Speaking of Tal's finger. <laughs> uh, so in January, we had a very bad incident with this lady who's sitting next to me. <laughs> um, um, and it was rather sudden. It could have been any one of us in the room. I don't know why the dog singled out Tal. Um, it's my but, personality. <laughs> but he did. Um, he did not give us many warnings. Um, there were warning signs, but it wasn't quick. It, yeah, but it, it wasn't like, I'm going to bite you until the last second. Um, it went from point A to, you know, Z in a matter of seconds. Um, he, the dog did do what we call displacement behavior. So he shook off, he opened and closed his mouth, he did a lip lick, but then he kind of changed his mind about Tal and, um, Don't make it personal. <laughs> attacked her. I, well, what do you want me to do? That's what happened. I'm not making it personal, but that's what happened. Um, so it, it, it all happened very quickly. Um, you know, you always think you're going to have time to act. You don't. Um, he was on a leash. Yeah. I mean, you know, and Adriana's face was right by his face. So, I mean, all things considered, uh, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Oh it my god, it could have been so much worse. Um, but um, always, you know, I can't say enough about body language. It really is how how we we know how dogs are feeling. I mean, we don't always have time to react. Usually, you do. As I said earlier. Um, Dogs are very, very tolerant of our crazy human world. Um, but, and, and something could happen to you walking down the street. It could have, you know, like it doesn't necessarily have to be an AWA dog or a shelter dog. You know, you, you never know. We live in a world with other animals. Things happen, you know, humans are humans. Just, it's kind of like driving a car. You do your best, um, you, you follow the rules of the road, but sometimes you have an accident, you know, sometimes somebody blows a stop sign, you just never know. Um, so, but usually if you're, you know, well-trained in, in driving, um, you know, you, you, you have better skills to react, you know, maybe you hit the brake before the guy, you know, blows the stop sign or the or the red light you know you see him coming I mean these are all things uh, to keep in mind but yeah dogs just like driving <laughs> uh, uh, not exactly but similar <laughs> not quite as dangerous. dogs are not as dangerous as driving <laughs> just saying <laughs> statistically yeah <laughs> um, all right so, Liz, what's the difference between a shelter dog and a common household pet that you can hug, cuddle, and kiss? Uh, a so, um, your dog, not, not, this isn't a common household pet. You should never hug, cuddle, or kiss a dog you do not know. Ever. Um, you need to be careful of any dog when your face is in their face. So, for instance, I was playing with my dog. Uh, we were playing ball. I was sitting on the floor. Um, and he got overexcited. And he turned, whacked me in the face with his mouth open and broke my eye socket. And I had a big gash on my face from his mouth. You know, things can happen. <laughs> 
that wasn't like the dog bit me. It was, uh, you know, I blame that on myself. I was sitting on the floor with the dog. Um, it, it, always protect your face. I'm not saying don't hug your dog. I hug my dog, to be honest. It, just know, know, you know, you are actually taking a risk. I mean, but 90% of the people who own dogs and hug their dogs don't have problems. But sometimes you don't have a problem, but the dog still is uncomfortable. True. You see pictures all the time of people right. hugging their dog and their dog is just totally uncomfortable with it. Did everybody hear Tal? Kind of. Okay. So Tal, Tal was saying, yeah, your dog will tolerate it, but that doesn't mean they like it. Um, I know my dogs personally don't like it when I hug them. <laughs> they don't. I, I, full, full confession, yeah. I do that, and I'm not supposed to, and I know better. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so hugging a dog is never really a great idea. Just saying. Um, so there are plenty of pictures online where people and kids are hugging dogs, and the dog is going, oh my god, stop. You know, the dog's body language is stiff, their eyes are averted, they're lip licking. You know, it's something most people wouldn't catch. Um, so, what's the difference between your dog and a shelter dog? To, you know, you know your dog a lot better than you ever know a shelter dog. Or anybody's dog. I mean, if, if you don't live with that dog, don't put your face in that dog's face. Even if you live with that dog, you probably shouldn't put your face in that dog's face. You know? Silly things can happen. Liz, I have a question here. Do you have any advice for our fosters that may have trouble getting a dog to use their crate while in foster care? Ha ha. Okay. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. <laughs> I see that. I found the chat. Um, so turn it into a game. So the, don't expect your dog to love the crate right away. They probably won't. So um, I would say feed the dog in the crate. Feed the dog high value treats in the crate. Feed the dog high value meals in the crate. Leave the door open and then play a game of go find it. So treat goes in, go find it. Treat, you know, then you toss a treat out. Go find it. And you just keep doing this to try and get the dog to go into the crate. You know, um, once the dog will reliably kind of go in there, uh, you can start to close the door a little. Um, give, make sure they have a really good treat in there too. Like um, a Kong that is stuffed to the brims with peanut butter or, or a wet dog food or a marrow bone. Something really delicious that they're going to want to eat in there. Um, the crate kind of needs to be associated with really, really good things. What about getting animals out of the crate? <laughs> so how do you mean? So if you play the game, the go find it game, that should help you. Um, use high value treats. So it's just a game where you're tossing a bit of chicken, like, hey, go find it. And the dog comes out, uses its sense of smell, and goes fi and finds the treat. Um, you can lure the dog out with hot dogs, I mean, Try and get them to come out on your own. You don't want to force them out. Um, usually if you, the go find it game is really good because it can, can really do a good job of conditioning them to come in and out of the crate very easily. Um, and it's, fun, it's kind of fun for you. I think it's fun. Um, and, and it's fun for the dog because then they're like, oh, treats, cool. And, and they're, you know, in and out. Um, if you have a particularly fearful dog, um, Try and coax them out with, you know, you can kind of make a breadcrumb trail. You can, you know, find something they really like, and that is for them coming to you. Like, so if they love peanut butter, they can come to you when they get, you know, like coax them out with that, and that's the only time they get that treat. Okay? So, 
If nobody has any more questions, uh, we'll end. Uh, sorry it took me so long to figure everything out. Um, if you think of any questions, feel free to email. It's behavior at awanj.org.